Welcome to Insights into Success, where with your host Paul Dodds, we hope to educate, inspire and motivate you to achieve your own personal success. We talk to guests from all around the world from a variety of walks of life to hear the realities of their own journey to success. What challenges have they faced, how they cope with failure and what have been the keys or will be the keys to their own success. In our Read to Succeed interviews, we talk books that have inspired our guests, and for some, they share their secrets to marketing success. Join us as we give you insights into success. Today, a guest on Insights into Success is the author of four best-selling books. She's also the CEO of a strategic consulting group, which has worked for over 25 years with media all around the world. She's an international speaker, and her realm of expertise includes publicity and networking. So welcome to Jill Lublin. Thank oh, you so much. There. Right. Lublin, sorry, Jill. I practiced that and I got it wrong. But welcome, Jill. It's great to have you on board. Thank you so much. It's a delight to be here. Now, I just want to kick this off by learning a bit about um, how you actually got into the area of publicity. What, what's your story behind that? So, you know, it's it's interesting. I was actually in law school and I hated it. Shh, don't tell everybody. But I did. <laughs> and I had to... Best. Exactly. And I had to figure out something to do that would be different and unique and wonderful. And guess what? Um, during law school, I started working in the music business because I love entertainment and uh, yeah. it's more creative to me. And well, that became my career. I became the director of promotion and publicity for an independent record label. And I actually then worked for four of them, four labels. And wow. uh, really started my career at that point, uh, then, you know, really in the independent music movement. And I loved it. And that's where my talent lies in terms of uh, the creativity of publicity. And, and so I kept growing that business from there and opened up my own PR agency. And now I'm working with mostly entrepreneurs from all around the world. So I'd imagine when you were in the music industry, that would have been probably a pretty dynamic, exciting time, was it? It really was. It was a lot of fun. And then I then it was a burnout, you know, because that's how yeah. the music business is if you're in the business of music. Um, and of course, yeah. every, every even musicians are in the business of music. So, uh, so I would be doing that business all day long and dealing with radio stations and, and uh, getting my artists to be played. And then I'd go to concerts at night. So it was kind of right. a nonstop 24 hour process, but it was a lot of fun. And, uh, and I'm glad to have had the experience. And you moved on from that just because you got burnt out, as you're indicating before, you're just too much commitment. I, I would tell you that, you know, the, any kind of that kind of business is a bit of a burnout. Um, yeah. I knew when I was at a concert one night for, I think it was the Gypsy Kings, and I was at this beautiful outdoor venue in Berkeley, California called the Greek Theater, which is a yeah. great place to see a concert, an outdoor uh, amphitheater. And I sat there going, oh, I'm kind of tired and I'm really, yeah. and I thought, well, I think I've been doing this too much. I think I was in the music yeah. business maybe five years and, you know, it does a bit take its toll like anything. And I, I find cool. when, for me, when I lose that enthusiasm, um, it's probably time to move on. Although I stayed in the business of publicity, I just yeah. shifted it and expanded it. And when you shifted it, what, you know, what, sort of influenced you and where you went next with, you, you know, your target audience, who, who that you're going to look after? So really who I serve now are uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners. And of yeah. course, that has a very broad definition, but I really love it. So it's small business owners, including coaches, consultants, authors, speakers, and then what I call independent service providers, people like you with mar digital marketing agencies, people yeah. who are, um, you know, in, in different kinds of businesses. So that's been wonderful and and a new kind of challenge that I've really enjoyed. And what would be what would be the most enjoyable part of what you do? What's the bit you get the most kick out of? Mm. Well, I love I'm a, a message person and uh, I enjoy helping others really find their message. Like uh, you know, often when you're in your own business, you're you're so in your business that it's hard to know yeah. what's my message. Why should people care? What does the media care about? And I help people find that, do it, get it, and and give it so that they can be a contribution really to their, you know, people they serve. And that makes a big difference. And tell me how things have changed for you. You know, with 
you know, the increase of use of obviously the internet over the last 10, 15, 20 years, how has that impacted on what you do? Mm, well, you know, a lot. I mean, realistically, here's, I mean, it's sort of a good news, bad news. The, here's the really good news. The good news is that that the whole internet movement and everything moved to social media actually enables my clients to get a lot more publicity. Why is that? Yeah. Because now they can do Facebook lives, LinkedIn lives, Instagram lives, all parts, and actually control their media and actually be seen and heard consistently every week if you want. You know, cool. that's that's amazing. I, I just think it's amazing. I remember a gentleman from Australia who was in my virtual publicity course following one of my systems. And, you know, he, he called me up and he said, Jill, oh, my gosh, I got 250 likes doing one of the things you told me on social media right so i just think that um it allows for more engagement and and a, a more expanded audience and i think that's good news and what about bad publicity you know particularly with social media these days you know what's your advice to to people in that regard and how to deal with that well, first of all, I tell you, don't be stupid making stupid comments. I'm sorry, but you know, <laughs> I, you know, mostly I I keep my opinions to myself. I'm professional yeah. on social media. Um, I do think sometimes people go on a rant and a rave, and it's not the best place unless that's your business or that's what you want to do. And you know, you yeah. got to take the consequences of that, and um, the consequences are often bad publicity. So I would my general best advice is just be nice. You know, I wrote a book called <laughs> The Prophet of Kindness. I want people <laughs> to be nice. Um, and I think that, you know, unfortunately, social media has gotten to the point where it's like everybody can rant and rave and yeah. not be not be so kind. Um, yeah. And no all, accountability. Yeah, exactly. So it's become like this forum for that. And I just think, you know, we all should be professionals and adults and treat each other well. Um, you know, as far as public, so that's one way to get bad publicity. And, and I think the yeah. circumvention and the cure is just be nice on social media. And if you don't have something good to say, it's that old golden rule. Just don't say it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And what about, though, if you are being nice, but you still get someone that goes and puts some derogatory, you know, comments about you online, should you ignore them or should you engage with them? Like, what would you advise would be mm. the best strategy? You know, I think, listen, there are some people who are just going to complain no matter what. So if you can mm. deal directly with that person, I think it's always wise. Um, I yep. do think it's smart to even make comments. Uh, and, you know, if there is something they're misreporting, frankly, go in there and explain it. You know what I'm saying? And make that public. Yep. Um, and and then, you know, there are some ways that you can actually get comments deleted. And I think it's probably worth trying if there are derogatory comments. Because, again, just some people, that's, you know, that's their way of communicating as opposed to directly talking to you or, yeah. you know, making it right. So the only thing I could recommend is go to them and try to make it right and ask them nicely to take the comments down. And also, you know, you can write to Google or other places to see what you can do about getting yeah. comments removed. And I guess what you're saying too is no matter what, hold yourself to a high standard professionalism. So if they if they make disparaging comments, keep professional at all times. Don't don't go down to their level in any response. Absolutely. And you know, I mean, there was somebody I remember one time said one really strange thing uh, toward me about me. Well, their their whole contract was incorrect, like how they stated it. So I just went on mm. there and stated the record factually. You know, it's like if you ever read hotel or restaurant reviews, you know, and one thing's a bad one and they will come on, you know, and they get it a lot, unfortunately, but, you know, they will come yeah. on some and will say, you know, thank you so much for letting us know. Right. That's a that's a great way to deal yeah. with something like that. But that's a different industry. That's tourism industry when you're a service yeah. industry. But if you notice and I'm always impressed that a restaurant or a hotel would come on and say, you know, thank you for letting us know we will work to correct the problem. I'd be much more likely to book a hotel room uh even if they're not perfect reviews or you know five stars yeah. Be because yeah. they're making effort yeah they're listening yeah they're listening and they're um saying i'm going to go fix the problem you know interestingly enough the biggest pr problems like look at adwala juice adwala juice had some people die at some point from their juice uh and there was a really big bad pr kind of a kind of problem well adwala did the right thing they said we made a mistake. 
we're correcting yeah. this mistake. We're going to do this and spend this much money to correct the mistake. Then they reported back, we've corrected it. Now, Adwal, if you notice, is still doing really well out in the yeah. world. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying because they took responsibility and they corrected it. I think that's yeah, all I you do. can really, really do in life. Yeah. Okay. Now, talking small businesses, what do you, if you, consider if we talk to my small businesses do you think that they actually would consider that they need a pr strategy um or would they actually think that oh no it's only really for the big guys you know it's too expensive i'm in any little business that's not not for the you know average business like me what would your response to that be well paul i think number one every you know most people listening here are probably small business owners and here you yeah. and i are talking on a media a wonderful podcast. And I would tell you, you and I both now have more exposure because we're here talking to all of you listeners. So guess yeah. what? You can be doing this too. And is it going to be good for your small business? You bet it will. Listen, I had a coach, one person just started her coaching business, got featured on an ABC radio station in San Francisco. And guess what happened? Seven clients that day signed up for wow. her coaching programs. Now, oh, do you think that's man. good? A financial financial planner, same thing. He actually got featured in a blog, one blog, and his uh, web visits went up by 47%. He got nine prospects, six of whom became clients within that week, right? And I could go yeah. on and on and on. In fact, Paul, I mentioned to you, I worked with a woman who owned a digital marketing agency and following my publicity system, guess what happened? She also, she got... Um, Featured because of something I told her to do. I like to call it use yeah. everything you've got. Not yeah. in her case, it was being Filipino and, and talking about hashtag stop Asian hate. And that's the story she went out with that actually got her two speaking engagements. And literally, um, I think it was six clients that week with 15 prospects. Plus, of course, uh, much more engagement on her own social media and digital marketing campaigns. And that was all because of publicity. These are single person businesses, all of whom are different industries. And let me just share with you, um, it's that kind of thing that if people, publicity is about people finding you, people knowing your name, yeah. or what I like to call the I've heard of you somewhere syndrome. So if you're doing nothing, nothing happens, except you might get <laughs> lucky. But honestly, you know, people need to know who you are, what you do, who, what you stand for. The more you show up, the better that happens and the faster that that happens. Now, you touched on something there. You said about what you stand for. Now, do you feel that that's become increasingly important? You know, because we've got so much choice online now in terms of who we deal with, who we buy from, who we interact with. What we stand for, are people looking to understand that more before they choose to buy with someone or interact with someone? You know, I think so. Maybe call you know call it my opinion, but I do think people, and it is of course an opinion. Everything we all say is really our opinions. Um, but the point is that yes, I do think people. I've had many people say to me, "I'm working with you because I love your energy," you know, yeah. and they know that I'm a warm-hearted person and that I care about people. Yes, that matters. Uh, yeah. I will tell you, you know. Plus, I have 30 years of publicity experience, so it's yeah. a com it's combined with expertise. But listen, I made the decision. Come on, I have about working with people based surely on their personality, their energy. Would they be a good fit for me, and am I a good fit for them? Absolutely. The way to know that is showing up, being interviewed. People get to see you, hear you, know you, feel you, and I, I think it it makes a big difference. Yes, I do. And do you think for small businesses now with the internet and how things have developed that it's opening up the opportunity with effective PR to actually expand your um, target market into other countries? For instance, oh. you know, if you're in New Zealand, then suddenly be selling into America and, and other, other countries. Uh, you know, I think that's been the silver lining of everything we've all been through with the pandemic and especially now with the reach we all have. Um, because now people are trained into Zoom and, and using different mediums. 
which is great for expanding your business. Listen, I have clients all over the world, and I do mean all over the world, um, yeah. you know, and I've, I've also spoken physically in person in six continents. So that's, that was in a time now, guess what? I can be all over the world on Zoom, speaking, training, yeah. uh, running my virtual publicity course. It doesn't matter where people are. And I'm doing and speaking for groups all over the world. How wonderful is that? I, I'm yeah. delighted by that opportunity and that opening because I can serve people all over the world. I mean, my books, Profit of Kindness, is in India. It's uh, Guerrilla Publicity is in parts of Europe and, and China. You know, so I want to be reaching uh, the world. And for me, you know, it's unlimited. I, so I'm very excited about being able to help others in other countries, other parts of the world, you know, whether they want to direct their uh, marketing efforts into the United States or, or be global or whatever it is you're looking for. Yeah. Um, but I, I think global is the way to go these days. And mm. the more global you can be, probably the better. And then again, the other side of that is you may serve a very specific market. Auckland, New Zealand, San Francisco, yeah. California, where we both are, right? You may have just, yeah. just your market there, in which case that's great. You know where your market is. So tell me, I'm just wondering, you know, how does what you do differ and to what extent can you possibly add value compared to those other agencies out there where it's about like if you've got articles you've written and they will get them shared through, you know, they'll just dist distribute them through, you know, um, different network channels to, to get publicity for your articles. H how does what they do vary to what you do? Hmm. Well, that's article publicity. It's very specific. That's great. I take a, shall we say, a broader stroke, right? Um, based on my book, Guerrilla Publicity, what I'm looking at is ways that you can get your name out there um, using, uh, using good and innovative and practical solutions without spending a fortune, right? But yeah. that make you look like the big guys. Because listen, yeah. people can spend... 10 to 15,000 a month working with a public relations agency very easily. Um, yeah. And I want to teach people how to get themselves out there because mostly my clients are, you know, like I said, small businesses and they don't have the big budgets that you see right. the big companies have. So we want to give you simple, effective ways to get out there and, and is it, is it highly effective? You bet it is because it's that piece about, Yes, I've heard of you somewhere. And you get that familiarity. And do I think trust in the marketplace right now is important? Yes, yes. And that's what publicity does. It puts you out in the perception of uh, people's minds, puts you in their consciousness so that they can know you exist and choose you. And how, how important is it, or is it not important at all, if part, part of what you're doing is to write a book? Is a book mm. a good tool to use to help with your publicity? Well, I love books. In the, can you tell? I got four of them. <laughs> yes, I mean, four of them. So do I believe in books? Oh, there's my water. I was looking for that. <laughs> Interesting place you've kept it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, I was doing uh, an exercise class earlier today and it had to go up there, meaning taking <laughs> one, taking one, not giving one. That's not my area of expertise. But um, so, you know, here's the thing. What I what I've noticed is that um, as people are are understanding who you are and, you know, do books help that? Yes. However, a lot of my clients do not have books. Listen, I have coaches, you know, they don't need a book. They just want to serve individual clients, right? Yeah. So many times people don't need a book and you don't really need it to get more publicity. Is it a great excuse to create a publicity campaign? Of course it is. Do you need it? No, you don't need it. Right. Um, but you do need to start your publicity. You know, I'm big on what I call the gardening process of publicity. That means you plant your seeds continuously and ongoingly. You look for ways to fit in to what's happening in the news now, but also yeah. ahead of time, right? So yeah. there's um, things like nationaldaycalendar.com, which is a calendar of holidays. Take a look at them and see where do you fit in. And then, um, you know, using other parts of who you are, like today, there was a woman I was training and she's had, you know, she is a coach and she has an autistic son. And I went, oh, well, you know, 
why don't, um, you know, for National Autism Month, which happens to be in April for next year, let's plan that ahead so that you're um, moving ahead into that and getting your name out there consistently. So that that's really what we want to look at for for people is to to keep looking for opportunities to keep your name out there. Books give you that golden opportunity to make that happen quickly. So like, you know, as, as a small business owner, I mean, people listen to this and think this sounds great, but still think, yeah, but what's it going to cost? You know, what, what, how much am I going to have to spend to do this? And, and what are my options? So I guess putting that to you, I mean, you're in the, in the industry. If I wanted to, to work with you, what are my options and what sort of costs are we talking Yes. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you go with a large PR agency, you're looking, I mean, an average four or $5,000 US per month, right? Yeah. Now, me, <laughs> not like that, because I, like I said, I wanted to turn things around and make it very affordable. So I offer, for instance, a virtual get it done publicity course. It's 197 US. And wow. I, you know, I spill all the secrets. I tell people what to do. We actually get it done in the course. It's live yeah. and interactive with me. So I put together a way that people can get it done simply and easily. And then I have other programs. But I wanted to have something that was just such an easy yes for people and frankly gave them all the information they needed, which is why I developed Publicity Crash Course. And so with that, um, you know, for me, I, I, I'm looking at how can I serve people in different ways? And I have different price points. That's a really, uh, frankly, very effective way I've found mm. to serve a lot of different people who are my people and, um, you know, need some good ways to get publicity done. And I'm big on systems, right? Systems and simple things to get it done. So if you complete that course, would... Is the expectation that you potentially there at that point are capable of going out and managing your own PR? Or is that like a stepping stone, a good grounding, and then really need to work with you one-on-one -on -one after that to then sort of implement what you've just learned in the course? Oh, you are going to be able to go and get things done. I have people come back to me and say, thank you. I booked actually one woman three uh, from Canada. She said, oh, my gosh, I went out and booked three uh, speaking engagements. She got um, two radio shows that week. She started hosting her own radio show. But at that time, li literally radio, not podcast. Uh, you yeah. know, and and made it all happen right there. So I, I'm very practical, tactical. I think it's important that we roll up our sleeves and get things done. But that, you know, that's more my style. Um, so so I'm always I'm always like, let's do things so that you can actually do them right now and get it done. And then presumably look at people think, well, this is great. The course is fantastic, but I still need a bit of help from Jill. Can can you be engaged to work on a on I guess on a monthly sort of retainer or do you provide that sort of service at all? Absolutely, I do. Yes, I work one on one with people, and what I like to uh, explain is a hybrid campaign. You know, instead of hiring expensive PR firms, I yeah. work with people as if they hired an, uh, you know a high end PR firm, but really we do it a lot less expensively and a lot uh, more effectively, just quick and. And I eliminate the huff and the fluff, as I like to say. <laughs> and listen, I owned a PR agency. I know what it's like. And uh, yeah. and and I know what to expect. Listen, I even get hired by some people to find them the right PR agency if they decide that's the route they want to go. But one thing is, right. you know, you can get this done quickly, easily, and effectively without spending a fortune. But, you know, I'll tell you what I have done, Paul, if it's okay for your yeah, listeners. Go for it. I actually created a free publicity masterclass and an action guide for you, um, which is an opportunity to come live with me, yes, on a free yeah. masterclass. And I also created an action guide. So it's like a one, two um, gift, one, two step gift for you. And you can get that by going to publicitycrashcourse.com slash free gift. And maybe if you'd be so kind nice. to put that in the show notes, it's publicity crashcourse.com slash free gifts. So check that out. I think you'll find really good more tips, more tactics for how to get your name out there. Great. And then that, I guess, is a precursor to then they can then go on and, and take your, your course after that if, uh, if they're that way inclined. Absolutely.
All right. Well, I'm conscious of time. I would quite like to keep talking to you. But one thing I am going to say, Jill, is I'm going to look into it because I would like to take your course. Oh, thank you. I could definitely learn, I'm sure, from you. And I'm very much interested in this whole aspect of PR. So I'm going to take you up on that myself anyway and and encourage other people to do the same. So um, just to wrap it up, just share with us your books you've written i know you kind of mentioned them do you want to just quickly tell us so people understand just what all you've done because you've done a lot can you just tell us very quickly about your books absolutely so i have four my latest one is called the prophet of kindness about how to be kind in business always a good thing and guerrilla publicity is is my classic this is actually the third edition my friends so you know publicity keeps changing and we um keep you updated so guerrilla publicity is a great classic which will help you with all your publicity needs and from there i have a book on referrals called get noticed get referrals and a book on networking called Networking Magic about creating magic wow. for you've when, the when you network. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you've well and truly covered the bases. All right. Well, I think you've agreed to stay on for Read to Succeed. We were going to do a super quick interview. But for insights into success, Jill, thank you so much. I could talk to you for ages longer, but I know we're, we're pushed for time. So thank you for taking this time to share with us. And I'm definitely looking forward to doing your course. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. I appreciate you.